When we think of the best winners of all time, a few names pop up. Bill Russell with 11 championships and 8 in a row. Michael Jordan, who's 6-0. and Robert Ory with 7. But do we ever think of the best defender of all time and arguably the best rebounder of all time who went 5-1 in the finals? His name is Dennis Rodman. What is going on, guys? It's RTG here, and if you're new, please get to subscribe. It helps out a lot. And also hit that like button. Um, and leave your feedback and suggestions for new videos in the comments. All right, let's get right into it. Rodman has a very interesting story, and I'm sure we've all heard it. Several YouTubers have made videos about it. But when discussing Rodman's incredible story, nobody really brings up how he is the greatest defender of, re of all time, greatest winners of all time, one of the greatest rebounders of all time. He probably even has the biggest motor ever in NBA history. All right, let's just take a look back at his career. He had a hard time getting to the NBA, but when he finally did get there, it was at the age of 25, when back then his fire and height brought him to the NBA in the second round. In this day and age, no team would even bother to touch a 25-year-old in the draft. His best scoring season came in the 1988 season, where Rodman Piston made the finals and lost a hard-fought series to the Lakers in seven games. That would be only that would be Rodman's only finals loss ever. He then, the next year, averaged similar numbers and won his first championship with the Pistons. The next season was Rodman's yes, best yet. He was an all-star, but not named to an all-NBA team. His second last year with the Pistons was the second year of Michael Jordan's first repeat, and it saw the Pistons bounce in the first round by the Patrick Ewing-led Knicks in five. But this season was the best for Rodman. With his stint with the Pistons, he averaged around 10 points and 19 rebounds, and was an all-star and named to the all-NBA third team. In the 1993 NBA season, his stats were nothing but the same, and it saw the Pistons not even make the playoffs. Looking back at his time with the Pistons, he never was the cover of that era. He, like Zeke and Doom was, and he was actually a lot like Clay Thompson on these championship Warriors teams. From a defensive side of the ball, he was a lot like Clay Thompson. He was also a two-time defensive player of the year, and considered around the league as the best defender. In 1993 offseason, we saw Rodman join the Spurs to join a deadly defensive duo of Rodman and Robinson. Although we saw David Robinson win the MVP that season where he took over, Rodman averaged 5 points and 17 rebounds, his normal stuff. But despite both of their awesome performances, there just wasn't enough help and they were knocked out in the first round. We saw a similar season from Rodman, and where we saw him even make the All-NBA 13. But a little bit of a decline from D-Rob, but the Spurs did do better, even making it to the Western Conference Finals, but ended up losing to the Keem and Drexler-led Rockets, who ended up winning the championship against the Shaq and Penny Hardaway-led Magic team. Looking back at his two-year stint with the San Antonio Spurs, we saw Rodman leave the declining D-Rob and join the rising MJ Pippen-led Bulls team, and of course he was a part of Michael Jordan's second three-peat. He still put up insane numbers on the boards, and was still considered the best defender in the league, despite not even winning the Defensive Player of the Year award. He solidified his legacy as the greatest hustler, defender, and rebounder of his era. After that, he played a little bit with the Mavs and Lakers, but it was nothing like his previous years. What we can take away from Rodman's career is this. Although only a two-time Defensive Player of the Year, his defensive prance on the perimeter and in the paint was always there, and he was always hustling towards every loose ball. He was also an amazing winner. Again, 5-1 in the finals. I'll leave you with this. He solidified himself as the greatest rebounder of all time. And in his best season, we saw him average close to six offensive rebounds a game. Six offensive rebounds a game. That is insane. Just think about that. 
And he led the league in rebounds in his career eight times. And he even averaged 14 rebounds when he was 38 years old. Kobe retired younger than that. Just think about it. All right, that's going to be for me, guys. If you enjoy these type of videos and you enjoyed this video in particular, hit that like button and tell me in the comments below. By the way, if you're new, consider subscribing. I'm always on the daily grind. I'm uploading it every single day. So please, uh, please subscribe, guys. It helps out so much because I'm trying to grow. All right, see you guys.